Magkano ba dapat ang budget mo if mag-start ka sa United States? And ano-ano ba ang magagastusin mo pagdating mo dito sa United States? If balak mo pumunta or mag-migrate dito sa US, kailangan maging prepared ka physically, mentally, and of course, financially. Either under agency ka or direct hire, dapat may idea ka if ano-ano magagastusin mo dito. And magkano of course, para hindi ka mabigla or magkaroon ng problema pagdating mo dito sa Amerika. Isishare ko sa inyo based on my own actual experience para may idea naman kayo to help you plan ahead. So let's start. Unang-unang ginawa namin dito is kumuha kami ng SIM card or nag-register for prepaid account. Hindi siya pareho sa Pilipinas na kung saan pwede ka lang bumili ng SIM card sa bangketa. Need mo mag-register and ipacheck if compatible yung phone mo sa network nila. Kaya dapat open line yung cellphone mo. Need mong magkaroon ng personal cellphone number para means of contacting you, gaya ng sa mga bank, work, landlord, and etc. Yung kinuha namin prepaid card or prepaid SIM is yung may 8 gig na internet worth $50 under AT&T. Next plan kasi nila is 1 gig tapos $35 na. Masyadong maliit and hindi worth it. Kaya $50 each yung kinuha namin for me and for my wife. So total of $100 kami ni Mrs. Sa next month, nababa namin to to $70. Nag-joint plan kami under sa isang name para sa bayad na yun. Pwede pala yung ganun. The more user, the cheaper it is. Sana nga, nung una pa lang, alam na namin ito para at least nakatipid kami. Maraming options ng mobile network dito, pero AT&T na ang pinakamas sikat nila dito sa United States. And, depende sa state and lugar mo, may mga network services na mahina ang signal or minsan nga, walang signal talaga. Kaya, research wisely before ka mag-decide uh, bumili or pumili ng plan. So, $100 for the SIM card. Next, pagdating ko sa United States, binigyan kami agad ng 1,000 US dollars ng agency namin as relocation fee na na-deposit uh, namin sa account namin sa pag-open ng bank account. Yung iba nga, ranging from 1,500 to 1,000 pa. Enough ba? Mm, wait na lang until the end para malaman nyo. So, additional balance of $1,000 budget. We stayed initially sa hotel na covered ng agency. Pwede mag-stay for maximum of 30 days with free daily breakfast buffet. Pero, ang breakfast buffet nila dito ay hindi pareho sa atin. Every day, pare-pareho lang ang food. Cereals, two types, bread, pancake, choco na plain, uh, fruit, salad, uh, yogurt, coffee, juice. Hindi yan nagpapalit daily gaya ng ibang hotel sa Pilipinas. Kahit egg nga wala eh. Kaya nakaka nakakasawa. Pero if low budget ka talaga, patusin mo na. Tipid tactics din yun. Next gastos is yung housing. Kinuha namin is $425 New York style loft daw ang tema. Parang studio type apartment lang ang peg niya. Ibang apartment na nakita namin is ranging from $550 to $650, 1 to 2 separate bedrooms. May $850 pa nga na 3 bedrooms. Depending to based sa mga amenities na meron ng apartment na yun. I will explain more sa next video ko, kaya please subscribe now to keep updated and para mas makaiwas sa maling major decision pagdating mo dito sa United States. Medyo mahabang-habang usapan yun eh. Okay. We decided to move in sa apartment namin after 10 days. So, yung remaining na 20 days na covered ng agency, na-compute nila based sa apartment monthly value namin. So, if 425 divided by 30 times 20 equals 283 yung na-cover nila and or nirimers after 1 month pa. Down payment sa apartment is $400. Then, 425 for initial monthly rent. So, Recap, for the apartment, it's $400 plus 425 Total of 825 na. Pero bago ka makalipat or paglipat mo mismo, need mong iseta lang yung electric bill. Need mo mag-down payment, depende sa laki ng house mo or yung regular consumption ng previous tenant. Sa amin is $150. Pwede three-time payment kasama sa succeeding bills. For this segment, count na natin siya as buo. 
So for electric bill, down payment is 150. Then of course, yung water supply mo dito. By the way, kasama sa water bill ang sewage and garbage disposal. Yes po, may bayad po yung ganito dito sa United States. Down payment para sa apartment ko is $200 yung front payment. Sakit no? So, for the water bill down payment, it's $200. Next important dito is yung transportation. May mga ibang states sa US na walang public transportations. Lalo na yung mga medyo rural area. And kahit meron yung iba, mapipilitan kang bumili ng car kasi it is a necessity dito. If kukuha ka ng brand new car, nasa $16,000 to $25,000 ang pinakamura plus yung APR or your annual percentage rate na depende sa offer ng mabang sa'yo. If bago ka, mas mataas ang APR mo kasi wala pa tayong credit score na nabibuild dito sa United States kasi nagsisimula pa lang tayo. Kaya, if maglo-loan ka ng money sa bank, ang pinakamababang APR mo na makukuha is from 5.2% to 8.6%. Normally, 5 to 6 years yung contract na yun, or 60 to 72 months contract siya. If may napili ka ng car with a displayed price like 16000 may dagdag pa yan na around $2,000 as tax and paperwork. So, if 18000 yung base price ng car mo, times 5.2% APR. Tapos, times 6 years equals 5,616 ang tubo ng bank sa'yo. Bali, ang car mo na 16,000 base price plus 2,000 tax plus 5,616 equals uh, total na 23,616 dollars na. Ang total worth ng car na bibilhin mo or utangin mo sa bank. Divided by 72 months equals 328 per month yung babayaran mo sa car. Also, uh, sa side namin, we decided to uh, pay the down payment kami ng $1,000 para mabawas ang interest. Explain ko more to sa next video ko. Mahabang-habang mahabang -habang usapan din to. Kaya make sure to subscribe and ang dami ko pang tips na kailangan i-share sa inyo para makapili kayo ng tamang car with specs and makatipid kayo. So, for the car, again, $1,000 down payment plus $328 for the first month equals $1,328. Pero, bago ka na naman kumuha ng car, dapat kumuha ka muna ng car insurance on that same day. Or maybe few days during the filing of the processing ng car mo. Hindi nila ipaprocess yung paperwork ng car mo if wala ka pang napiling car insurance. If gamit mo international license and Philippine license mo lang, aabutin ka ng $360 to $470 per month. State Farm, Progressive, Geico, Root. Yun mga types of insurance na meron dito. Depende sa size ng car mo, sa akin ay subcompact size car na $370 per month. And also depending din to sa state mo. It varies. After ko i-convert yung driver license ko, to United States license, cheapest mas na nakuha ko is $130 na. Again, explain ko po sa next videos ko. So, car insurance is $370 para sa akin for the first month. Next is Wi-Fi or home internet. Ang available lang dito sa area namin is Sudden Link, which costs $79 per month. Only internet na siya and free installation. May mas mababang price, pero suggest sa amin is kunin namin yung unlimited kasi makakatipid ka dahil may free installation. And also, mas makakatipid ka if i-downgrade mo after mo mag-start ng unlimited muna. So, again, for the internet, $79. Next is health insurance. Nasanay tayo na pag nag-work tayo sa isang company or hospital sa Philippines, ay covered na siya ng insurance. In other words, libre. Dito sa United States, sad to say hindi. Need mong kumuha ng sarili mo uh, insurance. Like sa amin, covered ng company ang 60% ng fee ng insurance na yun. So, uh, babayaran ko lang is $170 per month. Depende pa yan sa type ng insurance na kukunin mo. Yung $170 ko is yung pinakamababang type na tat, uh, offer sa amin or yung pinaka uh, sabihin na natin mababang specs. Pero, 
uh, since may dependent ako, sinama ko yung wife ko. So, total of $450 per month yung binabayaran ko sa amin. So, I'm planning to change pa ng private insurance. Wherein, nakita ko is, 100, uh, sorry, is $260 lang. Dalawa na kami. Again, mahabang-habang usapan to. Uh, ibang topic for the tips regarding dito. So, for the health insurance, $450. So, recap. Cellphone is $100. Apartment is $825. Car is $1,320. Car insurance is $370. Electric down payment is $150. Water is $200. Internet is $79. Insurance for the both of us is $450. Total of $3,502. Converted into pesos, which is $1 is equals to 54 pesos. Ang total will be $189 thousand and one hundred eight pesos during the first week to third week mo palang dito sa United States. Ang sakit, di ba? I-label natin yung gastos na to as major gastos. And take note, normally, mga after two months ka pa, magkakasweldo dito. Kaya, isama na din natin ang competition ng gastos for the next month. For the cell phone, one hundred dollars, di ba? Nababa namin to to seventy dollars dahil nga na joint account kami. Apartment, $825 dahil sa down payment. But for the next month, only $425 na lang. Sa car naman, $1,328. But for the following month, it's only $320 for the monthly juice. And for the car insurance, $370 diba? Pero, nakapagpalit na kami to US license. Kaya ang next na bayad ko is only $130 for the car insurance. Sa electric bill naman, last time, ang da with down payment, it's $150. But for now, for this month, we only paid $55. Take note, depende ito sa usage. For the water bill, before it was $200 dahil sa down payment. But for the bill for this month, it's only $70 for us. Sa internet naman, it's still the same, at around $79. Sa insurance naman, same pa din, $450. Kasi nga, hindi pa ako pinayagan mag-switch to a different health provider. Dahil nga, wala pa akong valid reason at the time. Kaya total for the succeeding month na gastos is $1,607. If convert mo siya to pesos, nasa $86,778 pesos siya. So, total major gastos for the two-month period is $5,109,000 or $275,886 pesos. Again, major gastos pa lang to. Ito yung major gastos na pagdating mo dito sa US kung saan before ka pa makakapagtikim ng sweldo. Hindi pa kasama yung ibang gastos na tawagin nating minor na gastos wherein ipapakita ko sa part 2 ng budget series na to. Gastos like daily expenses, groceries, allowance, bedroom na gamit, tools, gas, cleaning materials, furniture, meal allowance, kitchen items, cooking utensils, gro groceries, appliances, and other usual prices dito sa United States. Lahat ng yung ipapakita ko sa next video ko. Lahat-lahat ng gastos namin for the house and etc. Kaya if you find this video helpful, I'm sure you will find the next one more helpful as well. Kaya please subscribe to this channel para sa ikakabubuti ng American Dream Transition mo dito. Also, please watch yung other US Guide related videos ko. Please like, share sa ibang kaklase, ka-review, workmate, relative na may balak pumunta dito or on their way dito sa United States. Para naman makatulong ka din sa kanila in a way. Congratulations in advance and good luck to your American journey. Thank you and God bless. Ito po si Nurse Juan de la Cruz, OFW.